But Judaism and Islam are Unitarian religions. So when you quoted 4.121, this chapter, when God says, do not stay free, for your God is one God. So what do you understand by that? God is what? One what? God is, is one being. I mean, the Quran doesn't say God is one being. And the Quran says, you know, know for sure that there is no God but He. So there is only one God. So in Quranic understanding, there is none but God. So isn't that Unitarianism? Isn't that what? Isn't that Unitarianism? Uh, no, because in, 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 you mean in the Quran? Well, first of all, in the Quran, the Quran, I mean, every time I think it's a Christian concept of the, of the Trinity. We're talking about the Quranic, Quranic self-definition of who God is, or how many God is. So when the Quran describes who God is, it describes God Allah, and He has various attributes. Does the Quran describe God being more than one person? Well, actually, you can argue that some of the divine prerogatives are to show that more than one person. Trinitarian monotheism separates Christianity from all the rest of the world's religions. Yes, there are three great monotheistic world religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. But Judaism and Islam are Unitarian religions. But Judaism and Islam are Unitarian religions. Let's have a discussion properly you know, and define your, your, your okay. verses. So, just because the Quran says there are other people who can create, like Jesus, for example, does that make God not one God? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that uh, the Quran both affirms that, uh, that Allah is the exclusive creator of life, creation is solely divine prerogative, and that the uh, Allah creates life by virtue of the mechanism of creating his spirit, which according to Surah 19 is actually a personal agent. And so, is God the creator? Is he the only creator? That's all. Yeah, and I'm saying that. that, that the Quran says he is the best of creators, meaning that he can give creative ability to other people. For example, you can create things. Jesus, for example, he was given the authority from God to move from birds, you know, clay, and create life. Yeah, so, that, that, so that does that make does that make someone else God? Just I, because I, he's given this? I, 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 I would argue that yeah. that's, that's the point that should be really given. I'm not interested in what Shabir yeah, says. Have a discussion with me and see what your arguments are for. So you said the Quran doesn't describe God as a Unitarian God. So I want to know how many gods does the Quran describe? Let me respond to the point that you just made. Um, Surah 32 actually affirms uh, that, uh, that the Holy Spirit is involved in the Christian human life in general. So it's not Can we have a look? Okay. Verses 7 through 9 of Surah 32. So if other agents are involved in creation, creating, does that make them God? Um, if, if the Quran affirms that creation is exclusively divine prerogative and the, and the spirit is involved in the creation of human life in general, then yes, I would argue that it's true. Quran says he's the one who originates everything. Correct. So is there other than God who originates things from nothing? Okay. So if you can show us where there are other beings, other agents who originates from nothing, like God, then you will say okay, there's something else who originates like God. So let me read um, uh, the context, but then give some context. So this is uh, from um, this is from Surah 32. Mm -hmm. um, this is from verse 3. Is it that they say he has fabricated it? No, it is the truth from your Lord, so that you, O prophet, do warn a people to do no warner has come before you, may be that they take the right path. Allah is the one who the heavens and the earth, not between them uh, in six days. And then he positioned himself on the throne. Other than that, other than him, there is neither guardian for you nor an intercessor. Would you then not observe the advice? And uh, in verse uh, 7 uh, it says, We made well whatever he created and started the Christian man from play. Then he made his progeny from the drop of semen from the spines of water. Then he gave him a portion of shape and breathed into him of his spirit. So that's the mechanism that she used to create life. That he breathes in man to his spirit. And that's the talking about the creation of man. I gave an example of God, and God creates one who is the originator. He begins the creation from nothing. He originates. So do you have anything in the Quran? Any other agents who originates creation from nothing? Um, a lot creates life in the womb. You're, you're, you're concentrating on... Because yeah. the, the, I am the, talking the about... The that only a lot creates life in the womb. 
God is the one who originates things. He's called the originator. Hadiyah samawati wa He originates things. Where do you find within the Quran other agents who originates things from nothing? What I said is that it, the Quran specifically tells us that Allah is the sole exclusive creator of life in the womb. Allah is the sole exclusive creator of life in the womb. Where does it say that? Week, um, I, it's, I think it's in Surah 15. I can't remember off the top of my head. So why did you bring this chapter and, and how does that chapter help you with this argument? Sorry? The verses that you've just quoted, how does that help Allah being exclusive creator in the womb? Uh, because that's what the Quran tells us. And not the, what you just read. Also tells us that not Allah creates life by the mechanism of breathing His spirit. You know, identified as you're confusing. Being. You're confusing creation of life, creation of trees and animals and plants. I'm saying God is the one who creates everything from nothing. He is the originator. Do you find anywhere where? But you're other changing the topic. I'm, I'm not changing the topic. The point because I'm. I'm the point that I'm making is that the Quran tells us specifically that Allah is the one who creates life in the womb. We're life discussing about things. is there anything? Is there anyone other than God who has? But the attributes. God is the one who has always been there. That's what the Quran says. There's no good besides it. Do you find someone somewhere in the Quran, someone is like God in his nature? Um, I just gave you the example of the spirit, which is the mechanism by which God creates life. I don't know actually what I was saying. Remember, you question the Quranic process of God is not unitarian, it's monotheist. So monotheism means there is one God, but he's not unitarian, unitarian meaning he's not one person. Yeah, the Quran never right? affirms that. Okay, so the Quran doesn't affirm that what you say. What does the Quran affirm? Does the Quran affirm that there's only one God and there's no God besides The Quran seven? affirms that there's one God. Okay, so when he's one God, how many persons is he? Um, well, the Quran doesn't tell us. How many persons is he? Um, well, the Quran doesn't tell us. Is there any biblical distinction between being and personhood? Uh, certainly. Can you give one? you give one? Well, certainly. Uh, the fact that we can speak of mankind generically and speak of individuals personally, and that we can make generic statements about mankind in general, but then make exceptions and speak about persons, demonstrates that all of the biblical writers function on the very same foundation that you and I function on every day. Every day, you and I know that we are human beings, but we also know that we are not all other human beings. We recognize the concept of humanity, and yet we recognize that we as individuals are personal. I have a human, I am a human being, but my being is shared only by one person. In fact, if more than one person shared my being, they'd put me in one of those funny places with a nice comfy, you know, jacket that I wear. So that's unusual for the human being, but remember, the difference is God's being is not limited. Uh, it is infinite and is shared by three divine persons. So I see a category distinction. I see a category distinction. Even if you are the most hardcore, Bible-believing evangelical on the planet, you surely think that God gave you a brain. Use your brain. Is there any biblical distinction between being and personhood? Okay, so what does the Quran say? Does the Quran say he's two persons or three? Well, the Quran, in repudiating uh, Trinitarianism, equates it with Pritheism and affirms monotheism. The 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 Quran Quran does the Quran define Allah being more than one person? Um, not specifically, no. Right. But you can make an argument that there are other, um, like the Holy Spirit, for example, in the Quran has divine prerogatives, which I think is, uh, is problematic for company. Just because you have, for example, a prophet doing miracles, which no one can do. Can you do miracles? I don't think you can do miracles, but can I. So if God gives us authority to perform miracles, it doesn't make us God because we have got some divine miracles. 
We are talking about how is God of Islam Allah not being one person God, one personal God, a unitarian God. What makes you think it's more than one person? You must have some evidence to back up from that. Um, well, for, I mean, the Quran affirms one of these, but it never affirms that there's one person. That's what you claim. So what indicates to you that God, God is more than one person? Um, well, that, that's the Trinitarian concept of God, but the Quran never actually repudiates that. The Quran repudiates tritheism, which is not Trinitarianism. Okay. One God says, do not say three, three what? The Quran says, do not say three, and zero, four, verse one, one, seven, one. It's three what? It's pure what it's saying, because it says, do not say three gods, because it then no, 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 no. one of Does it say three gods? Sorry? Does the Quran say, do not say three gods? It's implied very strongly. Don't say imply. Let's look it at says, the do not say three, but there what? is no God but one God. Okay. No, three what? No. Gods. It doesn't it say, says, do not say does three, it? but there is no God but one God. First of all, if, you say, if I say don't say three because there's only one God, what are you doing? No, 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 you're putting no, no. two in the same category. There's two different arguments. There's no. two clearly distinguished arguments here. No. The Quran says, do not say three. Now, what do you say about God? Three what? Three persons. The Quran says, don't say that because you've included persons or beings. Doesn't matter what you bring. Do not say that. That's what the Quran is saying. That's what the Quran left is vague because it can refute your your position, your position of person who says there's three beings. That's what what the vagueness does. It refutes blankly every concept of God which is more than one. Oh, I disagree with the, the Quran. You don't have to, you don't have to agree. The Quran does not engage Quran, with the with the with the historic Christian understanding first, of the nature first, of God. As we were discussing the first point, the Quranic concept of God is clearly one God. God says there is none but Him. There is none. And Jesus. So and Jesus. the Quran. I'm not sure how you were discussing with Shabir Ali or who else you were talking about, and you were saying no, it doesn't help because if the Quran is quite clear, there is only one God, and there's none besides Him. It doesn't help bringing out oh, God is not one person because if you say God is not one person, you should be able to find verses where God is saying more than one person. In the absence of any of these, you have to take the Quran as it says. The whole Quran is describing who God is. How many persons is it? Um, well, the Quran doesn't tell us. You can't just start by saying, I'm just going to start here. It's a oneness of person. That's just all there is to it. The infinite, eternal Allah with 99 beautiful names still has to be just one. One person. It's impossible for there to be three divine persons. Why? Is God's being limited in some way? Is God's being limited in some way? If divine revelation reveals to us the existence of three divine persons, is that not what we should believe? Is there any biblical distinction between being and personhood?